uh, two speakers um, on deck. Um, first will be Jason Lindsay, who's the founder and director of the Pride Fund to End Gun Violence. Um, he'll speak for a few minutes and then uh, introduce Senator Kane, um, who will then talk for a few minutes, and then upon conclusion of those remarks from Jason and the Senator, uh, we'll open it up for questions. Um, so with that, Jason, take it away. Yes, good, good afternoon. Thank everyone uh, for joining the call today. My name is Jason Lindsay. I am the founder and executive director of Pride Fund to End Gun Violence. We are America's only LGBTQ political organization that is solely focused on gun violence prevention. Uh, we were started just days following the Pulse Massacre, which happened in 2016, and uh, really mobilized members of the LGBTQ community in the fight for common sense gun reform. Just this weekend, uh, there was a historic March for Our Lives led by student activists all over our country. Millions of people marched. Reports have that the, the march in D.C. was the largest protest in U.S. history in the, in the District of Columbia. And all around the country, millions of people stood up and demanded common sense gun reform. And that's why today we are, everyone at Pride Fund to End Gun Violence PAC are very enthusiastic and excited to announce our endorsement of Senator Kane um, for his longstanding commitment to fighting for not only LGBTQ equality, but also his backing of common sense gun safety measures. You know, having served as the governor of Virginia when Virginia experienced the Virginia Tech shooting uh, took place, um, Senator Kane is uniquely familiar with the human cost of gun violence, and he is uniquely uh, understanding of the need for common sense gun reform. I myself am an Iraq War veteran. I served in the Army for 14 years and served in combat, and I carried an assault rifle in, in the streets of Baghdad, and I carried high-capacity magazines. And I'm here to say that as an Iraq War veteran, these types of weapons of war do not belong on our streets. And that's one of the many reasons why we support Senator Kane in his re-election effort. Senator Kane's Republican opponents are extremely radical. They're anti-LGBTQ ideologues who are bought and paid for by the NRA, just like many of the uh, politicians in Washington. Virginia voters rejected that kind of politics in 2017, and we at Pride Fund are very confident they'll do the same in 2018. You know, exit polls in Virginia in the 2017 uh, state elections showed that gun safety reform was the number two issue for voters directly behind health care. Um, other polling from around the country shows that that is consistent um, and has been a significant shift in the last year of how important common sense gun reform is for our voters. Um, many people are unaware that in the last six months alone, our country has endured three of the ten worst mass shootings in our entire history. So clearly the problem is getting worse. You know, Pride Fund was active on the ground for the seven months leading up to the election in Virginia, and we fought hard in the governor's race and many of the delegates' races as well. And we are turning that campaign infrastructure um, that we built up throughout the 2017 election cycle to ensure Senator Kane wins re-election. We need common sense gun reform, and we need leaders like Senator Kane to help lead those efforts. On the other side, both of his uh, Republican op opposition candidates, um, Corey Stewart and Nick Freitas, cannot be counted on to keep Virginians safe. They both tout their A ratings from the NRA, and it's clear they're unfit to serve the people. Of Virginia. We need Senator Kane's support um, in the Senate yet again to ensure we can pass common sense gun reforms. And we are extremely proud of his previous work, and we are proud to stand with him today in our announcement of our endorsement. And with that, I'll turn it over to Senator Kane. Well, Jason, I want to thank you very much for your leadership your vision in starting the Pride Fund and the support that you're announcing for my candidacy today. You, uh, as, a, as a veteran who has been deployed, you understand the value of the Second Amendment. You understand the need to have training and to 
be safe when you're using weapons, but you also understand that we've got to have common sense rules to keep people safe and that we can reduce gun violence in the country. As a proud supporter of LGBT equality as well as meaningful steps toward gun safety, I really appreciate your guys' endorsement. You know, first, just a little bit about me uh, and about my connection to this most important issue. I'm a, I'm a gun owner. I'm a Second Amendment supporter. Um, I was an attorney for an effort that amended the Constitution of Virginia to help guarantee the right of all Virginians to hunt and fish. That's in our Constitution. I'm also a former constitutional law professor. I would teach constitutional law at the University of Richmond. I have a deep understanding for what the Second Amendment is, but also what it isn't. Uh, and it clearly uh, provides the ability of individuals to own weapons, but there was contemplation by the framers of the amendment that weapons, firearms can be dangerous, and there needed to be a, uh, rules that there, so, that, so that such use or ownership could be well regulated. And that is a principle that has been consistently recognized by courts, and that's all we're asking for. Um, we're just asking for reasonable regulations to promote gun, gun safety. When I was elected to the city council in Richmond and I served the city council and mayor, we had the second highest homicide rate per capita in the United States when I was first elected. And four terms of two years each, I just went to two many wakes and funerals and crime scenes and support group meetings of homicide victims' families in church basements. And the pain of that early experience in my political life was intense. but. There was also a recognition over time. We learned there were steps that we could take uh, and steps that we did take that brought our homicide rate down and reduced our aggravated assaults. And some of those steps were about guns, about trying to, in the case of Richmond, get people to not carry guns with them but leave their guns at home. And when we reduced the gun carry frequency in our city, we saw a dramatic reduction in homicides and in aggravated assaults. When I was governor, we experienced, at the time, the worst shooting, mass shooting in the history of the United States at Virginia Tech in April of 2007. Um, horrible experience. Worst day of my life, and it always will be. Um, I impaneled a, a panel to study everything that went wrong and make public recommendations for improvement. And again, we learned through pain that you can make improvement. You can reduce gun violence. You'll never maybe eliminate it. We're not perfect, but you can reduce it and keep people safe. In the instance of Virginia Tech, it was an individual who had been, who was barred from getting a weapon, but was able to get a weapon that committed all these murders because of glitches in the background record check system. And what we learned there is that the better your background check system, the safer folks will be. Um, and then I came into the Senate in January of 2013, right after the shooting at Sandy Hook. And one of the first debates we engaged in in my time in the Senate was a debate that ultimately culminated in votes in April of 2013 to see whether we could embrace background checks at the federal level and how, how, how bitterly disappointing it was to be on the floor of the Senate and do what we could do when we had Sandy Hook families, often accompanied by Virginia Tech families, to be compassionate to them, sitting in the gallery watching us as we fell a few votes short of doing what we needed to do. Um, you can take steps to keep people safer, but frankly, Congress has been obstinately refusing to do so, largely because of being gridlocked by the leadership of the National Rifle Association and gun manufacturers. Um, the effort in the Pride Fund right after the Pulse nightclub shooting is just part of a big grassroots effort that we're seeing, and we saw it this weekend, of people standing up and saying to Congress, you need to reflect what the American public wants, and what the American public wants is meaningful safety rules about gun use. And I, I remember Jason going to the Pulse nightclub site in September of 2016 when I was on the national ticket, and how emotional it was for me, because I I had a feeling that was, in, you know, kind of buried in my heart, but I hadn't put it into words till I walked up to the site, which was that I'd always hoped the Virginia Tech shooting would be the worst. That's a weird thing to say about your own state or about a community like Virginia Tech that I really love, that you would want that to be the worst. But obviously I wanted there to never be a shooting that would be even more devastating and loss of human life, and yet Pulse was. And 
Vegas was. And so we just see uh, in the years since Virginia Tech in 2007 so many tragedies, with Parkland being the most recent, to grab everybody's attention. But there was a school shooting in Maryland last week, and there's kids getting killed and homicides and suicides and accidental shootings you know, virtually every day in the country. So I am very proud to stand with you, and I was so proud to march with 5,000 people in Richmond this weekend uh, to make that profound and simple statement to Congress, enough is enough, we need to take action. We need to take action to make folks safer. I support universal background checks. It's the only way you can keep weapons out of the hands of people who are prohibited from having them. I support a ban on assault-style weapons and especially high-capacity magazines. So often, if the magazine was smaller or it's in the changing out of a magazine where there's a moment where law enforcement can stop a mass shooting, we need more mental health services. We need school security, not arming teachers, but more of a commitment to federal partnership in both best practices and then investing in school security. Uh, we were able to put school security funds in the uh, budget that we did the other night after President Trump's budget had proposed to reduce school security funding. So there's an awful lot to do, but um, the, the actions of the weekend with these youngsters uh, give me hope that, uh, that change is coming, and if we keep up pressure, change will come. I'm proud to have the Pride Funds endorsement, and I'm going to run my campaign um, as somebody who Virginians know very, very well is a Second Amendment supporter, but also believes deeply that we can do a whole lot better than we're doing, and that involves a Congress that's willing to have the courage to stand up to gun manufacturers to pass rules to keep people safe. And I appreciate your endorsement. That's the kind of candidate I'll be. That's the kind of senator I have been, and that senator I have been, that's the kind of senator I'll continue to be uh, if I'm reelected in November.